Hey everybody, and welcome back to another Teach Me to Code screencast. This is Charles Maxwood, and this week I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, I've decided that on this application I actually want to show off uh, Haml and SAS. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to actually set up Haml and just do a quick walkthrough this time. And then next time what we'll do is we'll go over SAS and some of the cool stuff there. So um, the first thing that we need to do is we need to come into our gem file and we need to actually add the SAS gem or the Hamel gem, sorry. And the Hamel gem actually includes both uh, SAS and Hamel. I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. And so uh, just including it should be enough to get us going here. So um, let's go ahead and install Hamel. Now Hamel and SAS are made by the same folks and Hamel is just another markup language um, like HTML. It gives you some options for, uh, for ERB and uh, we're going to go ahead and show those off. Now the first thing that we need to do is we actually need to switch our um, uh, switch our layout and uh, any other uh, ERB files from uh, ERB to Hamel. All right, so let's clear the screen, and then um, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to find all of our ERB files. So we'll do a find dot iname, and iname is a uh, case insensitive name. Star dot ERB. And so it looks like we have two of them. So what we can do here is if we go to the home view here, then if we do, um, and I've installed Hamel in my in my uh, regular gems. Uh, let's just do this. Bundle exec HTML to Hamel index. Okay, now I would have expected it to include hpercot if it needed it, but uh, let's just go ahead and come back over here and uh, we'll just include it. Let's put it in the development environment because I don't I don't foresee us having to uh, having to do this in production so. We'll bundle install. <clears throat> and then if we, okay, Ruby parser. Now let's just move these up here. For HTML2. I didn't bundle install. <laughs> now I am impressed that uh, Bundler actually works from here because the gem files up in the uh, core uh, Rails stuff. Okay, so you can see that it uh, it translated it right there. So what we can do then is we can uh, we can uh, shove that into a file. And then if we come back over here, we can see that we have the Hamel file. So let's go ahead and do that with our uh, layout. So let's go ahead and look at what we've got here because uh, it's going to be rather interesting. 
Now the first thing you'll notice is this bang bang bang. Um, what that tells it is that it's going to be using HTML5 I believe. Or it, anyway it, it gives it the doc type line that's what that does. And um, bang 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 is HTML4 or HTML5 I don't remember. Anyway um, percent what that does is that says um, put the tag up that uh, that comes after the percent. So this this will translate into the um, the open HTML tag, and this will translate into the head tag. And you'll notice that this is all nested and that there's no close tag here. And the reason is is because it automatically closes it and it includes it by indentation. So this is significant white space. That's something that a lot of people have a problem with with Hamel, but um, you know it. It, it works and for me this is uh, very readable um, and that's something that I like about it I, I don't have a real strong preference between the two but uh, that's one thing that I really do like is that the indentation makes it easy to determine um, what is inside of what and the other nice thing is that there aren't any close tags so anyway um, so you have your title tag and then you'll notice here you have this equals and then you have what looks like what would have been a, an ERB call and that's what this is that's exactly what it is so the equals is basically your ERB insertion and so you can use your rails helpers here as you normally would and so you know you have your style sheet your uh, JavaScript and then the, the cross-site uh, request forgery stuff and then the welcome you know, current user, current user email, and this is stuff that we did last time. And then um, we have the yield, which, you know, yields the body of the actual page. So I'm going to do something crazy here, and I'm actually going to remove, oh, remove this file, and remove this file. And then what we'll do is we'll come here, and we will or we'll just do a rake cucumber and we shouldn't shouldn't see any change here whatsoever it should just work of course another thing that occurs to me we're still in the layouts folder and that won't work because there's no rake file there Right, and all of our uh, all of our scenario passed um, so it looks like it's all working just as planned so uh, that pretty much does it for Hamel um, I know that this is a short video but uh, next week SAS will probably take a little bit longer and it's a little more involved but it does some really cool stuff for your style sheet so um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stop this here and we'll pick you up next week do you want to learn Ruby on Rails? Then sign up for my six-week course at teachmetocode.com slash Rails course. Need expert help with your Ruby, Rails, or Sinatra application? Give me a call. My phone number is 801-367-6164, or you can email me, Chuck, at teachmetocode.com. Thank you. New Relic is the leading provider of application performance management tools for Ruby and Java applications. Thousands of companies use New Relic RPM to monitor, troubleshoot, and optimize applications deployed either in the cloud or in dedicated hosting environments. RPM Lite is free, fully supported, unlimited time version available at www.newrelic.com. All the leading Rails companies use New Relic including 37 Signals, AT&T Interactive, Shopify, Our Stage, IGN, and lots more. This episode is sponsored by Jumpstart Lab. Jumpstart Lab offers private and corporate training in Ruby, Rails, and related technologies. They're experienced educators, not just good developers, and will get you going quickly. Courses can be scheduled in the U.S. or around the world and curriculum customized to meet your needs. Learn more at jumpstartlab.com. 
That was wonderful. Bravo. I loved that. Oh, it was great. Well, it was pretty good. Well, it wasn't bad. Well, there were parts of it that weren't very good, it though. It could have been a lot better. I didn't really like it. It was pretty terrible. It was bad. It was awful. It was terrible. Get him away. Hey, boo. Boo. 